Hello everyone, reporting today for Fun Robotics Network, I'm Abhas and with me here is Team 2871 Eureka from India. They have been absolutely fantastic this season, coming into the Houston World Championship, they were the Edison Division winner, perhaps more importantly, you are into the deep World Championship finalist, absolutely fantastic matches, match after match, just super awesome specimen cycles, they have really great hang mechanisms, very fast specimen alignment mechanisms, I can't wait to jump into it on Behind the Bot. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. Kettering University's cutting edge programs and their experiential co-op model seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds, offering hands-on, feature-focused learning that empowers students to pursue new ideas and inspires other institutions to follow their lead. Don't just be ahead of the curve, create the curve. Get more information at kettering.edu slash first. Okay guys, so first question is with the architecture. We've seen a lot of different designs. We've seen, uh, you know, the two slide architecture is pretty common this year. Why did you guys go for it specifically? Right, so what I would say is first, we just looked at a lot of designs online. A lot of people had posted a lot of designs on Discord. There were a lot of challenges that were done. And so we basically learned from there. We looked at the most common intakes, how they work, all of the transfers, etc and just we built up on that and we just kept on kept on improving on that okay got it and now jumping into the intake itself it's very light and small uh what were some of the packaging concerns and like why did you make it uh so small over here out here so one thing we made it quite small is we knew that a lot of robots are going to be intaking from the submersible so to have utilize minimum space in the submersible so that we can pick up while other robots are trying to pick up we can first pick up and run we tried to make the intake as uh, small as possible so like the width of our robot is just 13 inches which is quite small compared to the other robots we've mounted our intake on just one single uh, gobilla bar which keeps it around like four inches wide yeah and can it, can we see an intake cycle yeah, sure. uh, real quick if you don't mind and as far as the uh, claw itself goes i see here you guys have your claw it's pivoting but also the gripper geometry is very unique now that you have this sample in here can you walk me through how you determine this gripper geometry okay um so when we started off we actually uh, tried off an active intake but it didn't work out well because we didn't have enough motors. So we added a gripper. Uh, so we added a gripper. First, we had a thick gripper, like it had a thick base. It was not like pointy like it is now. We added a gripper which was thicker at the bottom. But what we faced a problem was that when there were samples in clusters together, the gripper was not able to pick it up. So then we added a pointier gripper, which which would shake the samples down, and it would allow us to pick a pick a sample which is in a cluster. Cool. Yeah. Now, jumping into the slides a little bit here, I see a lot of BWT slides all over the robot. Why go with those? So, the number one reason why we took BWT, uh, BWT sliders is because they have inbuilt bearings on them for from which we can do the stringing. So, like, as you can see here, these are the inbuilt bearings that the BWT sliders have. So, we don't need to add any extra, like, 3D printed ca casings or anything to do this uh, stringing. Yeah. Because adding those would make the robot bulky, and which would again take up a lot of space while you're taking it from the submersible. And I know a lot of teams have started stringing only on one side instead of both, but you guys have done both sides stringing. Yeah. Why did you go with that? Um, okay, so we added both sides because sometimes uh, we did include only like one side of stringing. But sometimes whenever we used to open the intake, if a slider got stuck inside, it would just stay there. It would not come ahead with us. Mm -hmm. So then that would cause, the, of course, the sliders to break as well as the intake to break. So then to ensure that the, both the sliders are opening at the same point, we added stringing on both sides. Cool. And is it two motors for the intake uh, um, extension or no. just one motor? So we have one motor for the intake extension and that's it. Okay, awesome. Jumping into the deposit mechanism, you guys have this really awesome polycarbonate guide over here. Walk me through how it works, what it does. Talk about so it. that is our specimen aligner. We've just recently introduced it in our bot before we came to the World Championships. So we saw a lot of uh, robots using it and we also thought, like uh, also during auto, sometimes the body used to come a little to the left, a little to the right. So this used to really help our human player in aligning the specimens and basically help it be consistent while picking it up from the uh, uh, wall, right? Yeah. 
And so uh, yeah, we don't really use this in uh, like when we're doing samples. So this is usually just helpful when we do it in specimen mode. Yeah. yeah and as far as specimen cycling goes, what automations do you have uh, throughout throughout Teleop to make sure your drivers can go just as fast as possible? Um, so during Teleop, uh, we do not have any automations. Like we do not use a limelight or anything for during Teleop. Uh, the only thing that we've added is that we take the intake all the way in and we put it inside the robot so that it does not hit on the submersible. Okay. So we can just cycle quickly. Yeah, and as far as like picking up the specimen, any automations there or it's no, completely No, it's completely driver based. Okay, yeah. got it, yeah. Going on to the hang, let's start with the level two and then we'll talk about the level yeah. three. Walk me through the level two. Yeah, sure. I can show you all the level two. So as you all can see, our level two hanger is mounted upon, uh, again, BWT sliders and it has carbon fiber plates. So we have two passive hooks which are powered by rubber, or like not powered, but they're attached to rubber bands. So whenever our motors go up, the hooks open and then we latch onto the lower rung. So after we latch onto the lower rung, uh, the BWD sliders go down. And once they've gone down, we start our ascent with the higher, uh, with the higher sliders, which uh, we have pa passive hooks here as well, uh, mounted on our outtake mechanism, uh, sorry, the delivery mechanism. Yeah, and, and so, so talking about the level two specifically, is it yeah. motor powered, servo powered? How does it yeah. work? So we have one motor which has a forty-five is to one gear ratio, which is right here, and it powers the entire low hang. Cool. And now going into the upper hang, I see you guys have your slides angled. Was that entirely because of the hang, or what was the decision there? Yeah. So we angle the slides uh, just for the hanging, uh, just for the hang. As many teams this year use their specimen arm. To, like their arm to pull this uh, rungs closer to them and then hang but that used to take up a lot of time so we incline the sliders to 75 degrees with the ground so that we can just directly go latch on and hang yeah and hand. I know you guys are another team with a PTO it seems just like all the top teams this season have uh, PTOs or gear shifters walk me through what your mechanism does yeah so our gear shifter is quite uh, unique so what we have here is we have a dock shifter mechanism so uh, we have one big gear and a smaller gear. The big gear, of course, gives us higher torque, and the smaller gives us uh, smaller gear gives us higher speeds. So during autonomous, the latch over here, which is powered by one servo, is shifted all the way out, which engages the uh, smaller gear. It works like the clutch of a car. So there's a ball bearing place. There's a ball inside which will go into the uh, long uh, the smaller gear while hanging uh, while tele during tele up. And when then we, when we need higher torque while hanging, we just push in the shifter which moves the ball in uh, the ball bearing inside and then it's the torque of the motors increase awesome yeah and is this gear shifter something you guys developed was it yeah. you had a mechanism you were able to purchase walk me through that yeah so we purchased all the parts separately and then we manufactured it ourselves very cool yeah and talking a little bit about driver practice when you're doing your specimen practicing what do you think is something you do different that makes you so consistent on the competition field so one thing we did a lot is just practicing parts so we would just go just cycling specimens not picking up not not taking any just doing specimen cycles to increase efficiency at that time and also we focused on doing the same amount of cycles in lesser time so we used to do one minute 30 second practices for 10 specimens 12 specimens so that when we have that extra 30 seconds we will be able to do more okay yeah team eureka thank you guys so much just a very optimized but simple robot that you just drive super super well and that shows i mean world championship finalists that's very, very impressive. Reporting for Fun Robotics Network, I'm Abhas, and this is Team 2871, Team Eureka. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. Kettering University's cutting edge programs and their experiential co op model seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds, offering hands on, future focused learning that empowers students to pursue new ideas and inspires other institutions to follow their lead. Don't just be ahead of the curve, create the curve. Get more information at kettering.edu slash first. Anymark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to anymark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions.